Asia Society for the closing week of Sarah Z's show. And to me, this is so much about like um, how images get made in a way, and sort of like it really maybe because I have printed color, it, I, I think about color printing, and I, I think about those things, but also just how all these colors are making up a pattern which if you print a lot of color you see this a lot in your printer it's really kind of about this um, finding poetics or finding inspiration finding um, finding meaning in how images get physically made right for this specific piece to me is about that okay this piece is just like the piece that's at the High Line right now, which is, um, they are birdhouses. There's um, two birdhouses at the High Line on the west side of New York. And this is one reiteration of that that I think is particularly um, intriguing, just because of the play between the wood and the fiber. She didn't try to hide or create an experience that would shield us from how this is created, and I, I really, right. really like that. I'm trying to do that in my work. When I see this, I get, I get really kind of excited. <laughs> I agree with you on that. There, there is no artifice in how she made something happen. Mm. And, yeah. and then yeah. you can also marvel at how it came into existence. Oh my God, no, let's talk about this piece. Oh, this is so nice. I think it's, it's great Wait, why, why did you? Why is that button so surprising for you? Well, it's not that it's surprising, I just think it's interesting that she's making these arrangements out of things that we can all relate to, mm -hmm. and that we all have, but we don't necessarily put them together this way. Sometimes I look at sculptures and I just have to touch, like Noguchi, like I want to touch those rocks all the time. They're not damaged by my palms, they're not da damaged by any oils on my skin. But is it, is it an accessible material? Not really, they're kind of heavy, they're kind of big, they're beautiful, but it's right. not a material that I come into contact with often. I, I go to the place to marvel at it, to sort of like have some kind of emotional affair with this material, right? right. When I look at sculpture. Right. I do that. But with these things, they're all so accessible. I mean, we all have these little things, and I think that makes a big statement about how, how she wants her art to be perceived. It's her work is predominantly about space, right? And it's defining, she's like threading space. Like she's defining space almost like a seamstress, an architectural seamstress. <laughs> but what I really like about the two-dimensional work is that in two dimensions, you, you actually are capturing your thought processes. And, you, and because she's so sculptural in her thinking, like she thinks three-dimensionally, she has to translate that three-dimensional thinking onto a two-dimensional surface. And so she's taking our Western notion of perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Which is all of those converging lines of a, to vanishing points to tell us we're going back into deep space. But she's also using the Chinese convention of landscape painting where you're never stuck in one point in any place. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, it's long, long scrolls. We're meant to travel, right? This is how you traditionally understand a, a Chinese landscape, is that you travel through the space and the horizon is never set. The horizon moves along with you as you look up and down. Mm. Whereas in a conventional Western um, pictorial space, the horizon is meant to be in one uh, place along the picture, and you're to understand that either you're looking above your eye level or you're looking below eye level as you're looking into space. Mm. So I think this is like the map of her mind. There's something revelatory in the way she thinks in these two-dimensional drugs.